How's it going everybody? My name's Chipper and in today's video we're going to be taking a closer look at the materials used for armors and why it's important when deciding which armor you should be using in Escape from Tarkov. Now this will be especially important with 0.12 just around the corner as it will help you decide what armors you should be using if new ones are added in the patch and potentially replacing meta 11.7 armors. Now, like most players, when armor material was introduced in 086, I thought it only played a role when it came to repairing armor and the amount of durability that was lost or the cost of the armor being repaired. However, I couldn't have been more wrong. So one day I came across a post by a Reddit user called Schwerkkex. Uh, I hope I got that right. Uh, who highlighted that armor materials act as a durability modifier to the base durability along with an awesome graph showcasing the true durability of all the armors in Escape from Tarkov. Now this completely blew me away because I had no idea that this was even a thing. Um, and if you don't know the damage multipliers for the materials to calculate the true armor durability, then you're not necessarily picking the right armors. Now, what this means is if you take the default durability of say a Zuck 3 press armor, which is 50 and divide it by the armor material as per the graph shown, you are presented with the true durability of said armor. So in this case, 50 divided by 0.45 for polymer gives an actual durability of 111. Now I have recreated the table linked in the description below with the latest changes made to the material modifiers and confirm these changes are live with Twitch streamer No Food After Midnight, aka NoFam, who has the most understanding of all things armor in Escape from Tarkov. A link to his Twitch and blog can be found in the description below and he really is the unsung hero when it comes to armor and explaining these sort of things in Escape from Tarkov. Now what I notice most about the current changes is that steel and ceramic material types have become a poor choice for overall armor durability for the class of armor that you're purchasing. Now the easiest way to showcase this is with the Gazelle Class 4 armor being a ceramic material and as well as the Trooper Class 4 which is a um, polymer armor material. Now, for a lot of players, just looking at this, you would tend to lean towards the Gazelle. It has 75 durability, and it also protects the stomach as well as the chest, whereas the Trooper armor doesn't. It's only got 70 durability as well. Why would you go with that option? But because of the material being used, uh, in this case, Polymer for the Trooper, it has significant HP advantages over the Gazelle. Now, rather than talking about this more, I thought I'd go through some highlights um, or some clips that I've taken with a second account and then show you the actual results of using these different types of armor. So for the first round of testing, we have brand new Gazelle armors and a stock Mosin being fired with seven and one rounds, which has 86 damage, 45 pen, and 84 armor damage, which is the second highest of any round in Escape from Tarkov at the moment. Now, after each shot, I will be healing to full so that we can test the effectiveness of the armor as it reduces durability before it one shots me to the chest. So we have three clips showcasing the same test and not surprising is how often you get one shot with the gazelle. However, there was clips that did require two shots where the round didn't pen and cause blunt damage or allowed the chest to survive the impact. So now we are using the trooper armor in the exact same tests. Now the biggest change was the amount of times I survived three shots on average and sometimes four shots with only dying to one shot being the result of a round fragmenting which increases flesh damage.
Now for the following clips, we are using the Gazelle again with a Tactech rig for added protection. Now the results do seem to increase the amount of rounds fired on the chest by at least one round before the PMC dies, with the average now being two to three shots. Now in the last test, we are using the trooper armor again with the Tactech rig, and the results on average seem to reinforce that the Tactech is increasing the number of rounds you can tank by at least one, with the average rounds required to kill the PMC now at four. I also found that the first round fired to be consistent at placing your chest HP at either 25 or 26. Now this concludes the testing of the two different armors and in my opinion, there is a justified reason to be running the best durability armor you can for the highest armor class that you have access to or can afford. Now I always recommend running a Tactech rig if you have the spare cash as it helps protect your chest armor first low penetration rounds or even reduces the damage of a round which might just save your PMC. Now before I go, um, and finish up this video. I just want to give a big shout out to Schwerkex and No Food After Midnight for all their hard work. And if you can show your support by giving them a thumbs up or a follow, I'd appreciate that. And lastly, if you enjoyed this video, please smash that like button and subscribe for future content. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment down below and I'll see you back out there.